Good morning, y'all. Welcome back to Poplar Creek Farm. It is in my book early. It's about 7 a.m. and I am out in the garden. I'm gonna finish weeding. So I actually did pretty much a whole video yesterday and then my phone overheated. And so it cut out randomly and it was really kind of weird, um, poor quality. So I couldn't use any of that. This one is squinting, it's not even sunny. <laughs> so my little garden helper and I are out here to, um, we're gonna do some weeding and then the other thing is all along here where it's grass, I am actually gonna plant tomatoes. Uh, I have quite a few tomato plants left from my seedling sale. But, um, someone's gonna, um, my, my uncle's gonna mow. No, it was, so my in-laws were going to bring a tiller, um, but unfortunately my, my father-in-law's truck is not functioning. So we are not gonna get a tiller. Um, which is totally fine. I'd rather get the tomato plants in like ASAP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try my best. Um, I've only got a couple rows left to weed with the stirrup hoe, which I will show you guys that because that's what my video was on yesterday. Um, and then we will do our best to chop as much of this up. And then I'm going to bring some dirt over. We have a big dirt pile. It was topsoil, um, from when we built our house. And I'm going to pile that up kind of like where I'm planting the tomato plants. Um, these are kind of just extras. I, like I said, I have a ton of extra from my seedling sale. I only have a few left that I am that I know I am selling. Um, I will probably bring a few to the market this weekend when I go. Um, but I, I did sell quite a few last night, actually. So last night was my first Whitesboro market, um, and it was amazing. Such a good venue, such a good setup. Uh, they had live music, and it was just really fun, wasn't it? And it you know, Kind of you were dancing all crazy. But I didn't eat all. Oh, okay. Because I was going home. You did leave early with Daddy. <laughs> so um, it was just, it was really, really fun. It was very busy and I did sell quite a few seedlings. I was doing BOGO, um, which helped, I think, sell quite a few. And um, because of that, I only have, I do have still quite a few left, but I have a few that I'm selling and then the rest I'll bring to the market, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to be done with them because they are outgrowing their pots they're getting really tall and skinny That's me, honey. so we need to kind of be done with them uh, I don't want to be selling something that I know isn't going to necessarily do as well uh, but I am selling a few more um, to the Utica bread company so they are growing our tomato plants outside of their shop um, they're growing them I think outside of two shops but uh, I know definitely the one in Utica um and they're going to use them on their baked goods which is really cool i'm really excited about that um but because <clears throat> because of that i'm i'm pretty much just at the end of my my tomato planting so i figure plant the rest whatever's extra excess produce wise i will bring to the market to sell yep so let's get waiting before the rain comes in as you guys can see it's it's looking cloudy you eating some kale <sighs> <laughs> Ready to get weeding? So this is called a stirrup hoe and it is a miracle tool. Uh, we found it at our last house actually. It was in the garage left by the previous owner and we didn't ever use it there. We didn't even know what it was for. Um, we brought it here with us because we were like, well, maybe someday we'll use it. We need it for something. We kind of just brought tools with us. And once we realized what this was for, it is a lifesaver. So I'm going to show you guys how to weed with a stirrup hoe. Now this is primarily for in-ground gardening. Um, you could probably use it in raised beds as well, but in between my rows, this is what I do. So I do use it somewhere on like the bigger plants that I know I'm not going to chop up, but I have, if I have seedlings, I don't really use this around them. I just do those by hand. So basically it just chops up the weed roots. It grabs from the root and pulls them up and takes me about half the time that it would to do this all by hand. I can do most of the garden. Thank you. I can do most of the garden within a, just an hour or two weeding like this. Whereas before it would take me hours upon hours upon hours to weed by hand. I would have to do one row a day and I couldn't get very much done. So this is a lifesaver. Guys, look, I have baby broccoli. 
Woohoo! Got this one, and I've got one over here. It's exciting. I don't think so. I can see it because of the leaves. I think they can see it. Hi, Hunter. All right, so the stirrup hoe is great for weeds in the rows, but chopping this fresh grass up, it's just not gonna work. Uh, it is not working at all. And I need the tomatoes obviously right up against the fence so I can use the fence as a trellis. Um, I think actually over along this fence, there's less grass and I might be able to chop it up a little bit easier. So I'm gonna take a look. If that's the case, that's where I will plant them. Yeah, there's definitely less and I can probably even pull some of the dirt from in here along that Let's see all right i'm gonna try chopping this up because it's obviously much more spotty and it's pretty much the same length so let's try that doing over there? We're picking some peas. Picking peas. Okay, awesome. Want some? I will in a few minutes. So this area was not as big um, as I was hoping to plant tomatoes, but it'll work. And I'm hoping my in-laws will still be able to get the tiller up here. Mmm, peas. So good. Thank you, bud. Um, I'm hoping they'll still be able to get the tiller up here and we can still this area at some point if not my uncle also has a small yeah. tiller um he has a small tiller and we can till this area because he comes up every saturday and monday and tuesday now um for markets well monday and tuesday sorry next week so monday was this week the tuesday market starts next week but i do want to get these all planted within the next week or so because it's getting late here in new york to be planting tomatoes um but they certainly won't grow anything if I don't plant them, and they certainly won't grow anything if I just throw them out. So I figure it's not gonna hurt to try. I'm gonna grab a bunch of tomato plants. Holy little bugs. So for selling tomatoes, I think slicers overall will sell better, um, but I would love to be able to do some like boxes of kind of a mix for sauce. So I'm gonna plant a bunch of slicers, but I'm also gonna plant a couple more of the um, paste tomatoes as well. I would love, I mean, I'll plant whatever's left. <laughs> I'll plant whatever's left at the end. Uh, I would like to plant some more Paul Robeson, but that's what the Utica Bakery is going to be buying from me because they're such a interesting tomato and really, you know, flavorful. So those are peppers, babe. So let's pick out some tomatoes. This is what I've got left. Uh, tomato, ouch, and a few peppers, um, but that's it. So this is this is kind of what is the remainder. So I grabbed a bunch of tomato plants. I've got some Roma, I've got some Quadro, which is a, a indeterminate variety of a Roma, pretty much. Climbing triple crop, beefsteak, mortgage lifter. Um, I think those are all that I've got right now. If I have room, I'm gonna plant some more cherry tomatoes as well, because bringing like bowls of cherry, tomato, cherry tomatoes for the market would be really cool. Um, so we'll see. I still, like I said, I still wanna be able to plant this whole area. That would be awesome. That would be probably, 30 more tomato plants that I could plant. Um, and I would love to do like all cherry tomatoes along here. starting to sprinkle but there's 20 more tomato plants I'm sorry 18 more tomato plants uh, planted along here and I think I can probably fit at least 30 or so along here which I will do this weekend for sure so the garden is weeded and now it is getting perfectly uh, watered in 
except for the garlic back there that is not weeded and that will not be weeded because it's just crazy. All right guys, well the rain really started coming down, which is good, we need it. We absolutely need it, the garden needs it. Um, I actually, I don't know if I've showed this in a video yet, um, and I would have shown you guys, but you know, it started raining. So in the back of my garden, I did end up planting squash. Uh, I planted, not all of my squashes, so some of my squashes are planted actually at my aunt's house because she has a giant, well she has two large gardens. Um, her one garden is probably double the size of mine. It's massive, so it's really good for squashes and things. Um, and they always do super well. It was, part of it was an old for, uh, horse pasture. So obviously it's super fertilized and it had clover growing in it, which is great for nitrogen fixing. So it's, it's just really, really good soil. Um, and so she's planted some of them up there. She's planted some pumpkins, things like that. Um, but I planted butternut squash. I planted honey nut squash, which honey nut squash was my, by far my favorite squash I've ever had. Uh, last year when I tried it, it was, it was incredible. Even like my mother-in-law loved it. She would take it every time she was here. Um, it's really, really good. Um, we also planted, I planted a mashed potato squash and a baked potato squash. Those were from Sweet Pea Farm NY up in uh, Carthage, New York. She sent me those. I'm really excited to, to see what those look like. Um, and the gourds from her and the princess pumpkins are planted up in my aunt's house just because of spacing. Uh, I also planted some Jack the Little pumpkins as well as one jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. So I'm going to have to, uh, my plan is to kind of spiral them around themselves so that they kind of stay contained so they're not vining out super far uh we'll see though how that go how that works um and then i planted two kinds of spaghetti squashes i think that's i think that's all the squashes i planted um and then on where i had my watermelon there was a row of watermelon that only one germinated uh i thought two had germinated but one i can't find it's gone um whether it got you know, destroyed by a bug or, you know, kids stepping on it or whatever. I do have another row of watermelon, unfortunately. Um, but in that row, the area where there had been watermelon, I was like, well, I might as well plant it, you know, use every bit of space in my garden as I can. That's what I'm trying to do this year is really, really maximize the space that I have. Um, and so I planted some more beans. Uh, Baker Creek, when I ordered seeds this last time, I ordered them for um, fall planting and they sent me a packet of dragon tongue bush beans and I didn't order them and so hey I'll take it um and, and that was not like a free seed packet my free seeds were um uh, zinnias and so yeah I planted those the bush bean dragon tongue bush beans I planted some more yellow beans I planted some more provider green beans um and another red bean and I think some more scarlet runner beans and uh scarlet runner bush beans and um, so those are all planted. So my garden is like pretty much maximized at this point, other than that one area that I want to plant tomatoes, but I do need a tiller. It's not gonna, there's no way I can do that without a tiller. So I'm gonna ask my uncle to bring his tiller up this weekend and I will till that and get those in immediately. I'm gonna put as many cherry tomatoes as I can um, because that's what I really like. Cherry tomatoes produce really fast and they produce large quantities. Uh, so for market gardening, that's a really good thing. And also just, it's right in the front of the garden so the kids can come in and like pick and enjoy and you know, have fun with that. Um, where they're not having to like go through the whole garden to, to get those. Um, but I don't know how many cherry tomato plants I have left. I think I have quite a few, but I'm not sure if I have like 30. So I may have to plant some other ones, um, which is fine. I'll plant any tomatoes, obviously. I'm just gonna try to plant as much of every square inch of my garden that I can use, which like I'm using my fence for trellising right now it's not the most ideal thing. It's not the sturdiest thing. Uh, the cattle panels are significantly sturdier, but cattle panels aren't cheap. Um, and I just don't want to go out and buy more cattle panels right now. We can't really afford to buy more cattle panels at this point. And so I'm not going to, I'm going to maximize the, what I have, um, use the fencing, which there's going to be some faults with that because chickens will be able to peck through, um, on the one side and get some of the, the fruit. But I think that's a risk worth taking. Uh, I think we will get enough fruit on the, the closer side to the garden that it'll still be okay even if we lose some to the chickens um so we'll see i mean i'm excited to, to just utilize this garden and you know plant it to its fullest potential and really see what i can do with the market because i am thoroughly enjoying being at the markets it makes me very very happy to be there um i mean i'm just the whole time i'm there i'm smiling i'm i'm happy even yesterday morning, uh, I did all farm chores in the morning. I did um, package up the chickens that we had butchered the day before, and then I did garden weeding. 
um, and some more planting and it just makes me so happy. I'm just at peace when I'm doing these things. So if I can really push to utilize this space as much as I can and um, kind of maximize the potential of our small farm, I absolutely will. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Remember, we're growing today for a better tomorrow. Please like and subscribe and join me on the next one.